Hello again, Fizzles family and friends. This is the pastoral message for Monday, October 26th. I'm here at Gettysburg again on the site of the Abraham Bryan Farm. That's the reconstruction of the Bryan Farmhouse. The Bryan Farm was a key site on the third day of the battle during Pickett's Charge. Mississippians under the command of Johnston Pettigrew attacked this area and after the battle was over, the farmhouse and the barn that's across the street here was riddled with bullets. Abraham Bryan was a free black man who owned this property, owned this farm. He and most of the other free blacks in Gettysburg left the town prior to the beginning of the battle for fear that they would be captured by the Confederates and taken down into the South in slavery. After the war, Bryant returned to the farm and made claim to the U.S. government for $1,028 in damages to the farm, for which he eventually received $15. The spiritual side of today's message is a little bit loosely connected and ties into a couple of recent trips that I took to Harper's Ferry, first with my family and then uh, last weekend to see the fall colors in uh, their peak. And so, as most of you or many of you know, Harper's Ferry was the site of John Brown's raid in October of 1859 with the intent of starting a slave uprising that would lead to the freedom for African-American slaves held in the South. And so the abolitionist John Brown, after he was captured uh, with the failed raid of the arsenal at Harper's Ferry, uh, was sentenced to be executed by hanging, and he was hung in Charlestown, West Virginia now, Virginia at the time, in December of 1859. But he became a martyr uh, to the cause of abolition. And so that is thought that his raid and his passion for freeing the slaves was one of the causes that led to the beginning of the Civil War when it did begin. And so after he, he died, there was a popular religious camp song called O, o Brothers or Canaan Shore that had John Brown lyrics added to it. There's some debate who actually wrote the lyrics. It's claimed that members of the 2nd Massachusetts uh, Infantry, who, by the way, fought here at Gettysburg much later, but in early 1861, they added their own John Brown lyrics to the old brother's song. John Brown's body is a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body is a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body is a moldering in the grave, but his soul goes marching on. And so that became a marching tune among Union, Union troops. In November of 1861, later in the year when those words were added, Julia Ward Howe was present at a troop review in Washington, D.C., and heard those words sung to that song. And a companion of hers suggested that she write more spiritual words to the song. And so she went to bed that night and woke up and quickly wrote down the words that came to her so she wouldn't forget them in her sleep. And they became known as the Battle Hymn of the Republic, uh, that also became one of the standards to inspire the Union troops and obviously is a hymn that is still sung in churches today. An interesting wrinkle in the story is that Julia Ward's Howe's husband, Samuel Howe, was one of the people who funded John Brown's efforts to free the slaves in Harper's Ferry. And so to conclude today, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
Messiah, his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. I look forward to coming to you with more messages through the week and to worshiping on All Saints Day in our sanctuary on Sunday. Please keep all those in our congregation on our prayer list in your prayers as well as all throughout the country and the world suffering from the coronavirus. Until we talk again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong. And our, God, and our God who keeps marching on, I know is continuing to bless us all. Goodbye for now.